This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com forward slash rogue to start your free trial and get 10% off your first purchase. And most importantly, stick around for the end of the episode because we have a huge announcement about our website, themodernrogue.com. It's a post-nuclear holocaust. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just hypothetically, now oh. that we're expecting one any minute, Oh. like all the way back to the Stone Age, like Canical for Leibowitz, like nothing but rock stones and animals. Tabula rasa. If you could bring with you only the knowledge, what is the most advanced military technology you could wield in that space? Probably like the mill wall brick. <laughs> <laughs> the nunchucks, no, that's magazines. <laughs> all of my weapons require some sort of print. They're all paper-based or yes. PVC. <laughs> yes. You're pretty much screwed. I. I well, hold on. Right? Right? Should I reset the injury counter now? <laughs> it's gonna be great! Because <laughs> I'm a monster! The modern rogue can let loose an arrow. Here we are with the Hun. He is going to teach us about mounted archery. Now, my big question is, what makes mounted archery so potent of a battlefield technique? Well, you have to remember that cultures like the Mongols basically took over Europe with nothing more than horses, bows, and arrows. That's amazing. They controlled an empire twice the size of the Roman Empire just with those things. Okay, what's different about mounted archery than your traditional archery? Usually the bows are much smaller. Uh, easier to use, so you look at the bow like a long bow, about six feet long, compare it to, say, a small Turkish bow. Uh, oh, wow! Now, it seems like this would be a lot more powerful and could shoot farther, but what's the advantage of this one being smaller? Actually, distance record in the world right now is set with one of these. What? Yes. Why, why does anyone have one of these then? Size doesn't matter, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Been saying that for years. Yeah. But again, why even bother with one of these then? Uh, tradition. There's a lot of traditional shooters that uh, we are a country that's mostly England, France, Scotland. That's the traditional bow that came from those countries, and that's typically what America's made of. Okay, so tell us about mounted archery bows. Okay, back to that one. You see it's just one large piece of wood. Yep. All right. What makes a mounted archery bow special, besides being small, these little pieces on the end. So they, sometimes they're large, sometimes they're small, but that reflex, that curve. Can, can, can I grab one? Absolutely. Okay. So the end piece we call a SIA, S-I-Y-A-H. Uh -huh. And that is what provides leverage. So if you look at the way a bow bends, you notice? Yep. You get a lot more bend because these little levers provide a lot more leverage against the bow itself. Long bows just use size, length, sheer length, rather than actually being short and compact. Okay. So if you had a bow that didn't have these and it was just that long, wouldn't be nearly as strong. And when you've got something this short, it makes a lot more sense that you're going to be on a horse? Uh, actually, that was a byproduct. Funny enough, the construction of one of these bows is far different. So instead of being made of solid wood, most of the time they're what we call a composite. And the composite is sinew on the front, horn on the back. Oh, wow. And the materials work against each other. Wait, so huh? you can make a bow that's smaller. And if you don't have wood to build a long bow, you can make one without wood if you need to. What, what kind of horn? Uh, water buffalo, ibex, there's a lot of the, uh, the long, the prong horns, the big, long, thick horns. Because these come from the steppes, and so there aren't as many trees. Yeah, many yeah, yeah. Straight trees is exactly. what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, wait, is that a true story I heard? Like, there wasn't enough wood, so you couldn't rely on a campfire, so they would tenderize their meat by riding on them on horseback? Yes. Really? Yes. That's a real thing. And they also did the same thing with fermented mare's milk. They put it in a bag that they wore on the ride so that it would constantly churn Be it. churning, yeah. yeah. And agitating it. Hang on, I gotta write down an episode idea real quick. <laughs> Fermented no? mare's milk. I'm not looking milk. forward to it. <laughs> oh no! But we gotta do it right, with so you. Ariac. What are the differences between these bows? Are these, are these all different styles? Yes. Okay. So we have uh, about six different cultures. Turkish. So the Turkish bows are quite short. It just looks adorable. Yeah. I mean, it'll kill you. Right. Oh, they always. This is another Turkish. This is a little simpler one. Uh, this is one of the oldest bows. This is a Scythian style. This goes back to about 600 BC. Wow. The deeply recurved tips were one of the things that this bow was known for. Then going a little bigger, this is a Manchu style bow. This is one of the Chinese foot bows. So you notice it's actually pretty tall. It's pretty long, yeah. Not so good on a horse, 
Mostly it was footmen that used this bow, but I've seen a few people use shorter versions of this bow. Uh, it's characterized by these blocks on the end that they took from the Mongols. Got it. So makes a few differences. Uh, this is a Bulgarian Avar bow, and then the end is a Saluki bow, which is based on a Crimean Tartar. And uh, it's a very short, very curvy steps bow. Really wish I'd paid attention during world history right now. <laughs> yeah. Now I noticed that we have an assortment of terrifying looking types of arrows. They, are, they, are there particular arrows that are uniquely good for mounted archery or, or just all of them are gnarly? So any archer would have probably a few of these in their quiver. Uh, this is actually, so there's a few of them that are the most common. So you have something we call a bodkin. It's for armor. Oh, got it. These are armor piercing rounds. Yes, armor basically. piercing rounds. Yeah. Then you have the broadhead, which, you know, any deer hunter, anyone that's seen that knows what that's for. And then this is uh, to pierce skin and get stuck inside. Bards. Yeah, they yeah. stick in, they don't come back out. And then they have some tribal tips. This is actually based on one of the tips of an actual horseback archery culture. That is the Magyars. That's the Hungarian. So what's the thinking? I, I see that we have a blade on each side. I, is it just meant to poke a bigger hole than one of these other guys? So fun thing. If you're shooting at other horseback archers, if it sticks in them, that's great. But if it works itself back out... Ooh, that's awful. Then you, 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 mm. you poked a balloon and now you're just bleeding out. Yeah. Drain plug. Ah. Uh. Do you have any that's like a boxing glove on the end? <laughs> or maybe, maybe some with a firecracker. Yeah. <laughs> like, like an episode of Dukes and Asker. Hold on. Wait, wait. But I do. Whoa! Wait, why is there a, a hole in this one? What Sig is that for? Whistling arrow. Signaling. What? Oh, that's great! I'll shoot that for you later. If you oh, that'd, yes. be, oh, that'd be amazing. Well, so speaking of which, I, I know that there's something different about the standard archery lesson doesn't... Okay, I don't want to think about those. Those are no, awful. No, that's for like... You've been pulling scams in the village, and they're gonna <laughs> hang you, but I'm off to the side, and uh, I got this, and the, the noose drops, and I cut through the rope, oh, okay. and you're fine. God, I wish. Nope, <laughs> nope. That's not how that works at nope. all. Birds. Oh, of course, because you don't need to really pierce it, you just need to hit them. Exactly. Oh, so it's just really wide. Yeah. Okay, so my story's fine. better. I, I, I'm a fan. Well, then you got, there oh you go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What is that? What is that just to end. destroy somebody? Well, you have to imagine too, you're in battlefields with horses, lots of men. You want something that's going to be heavy and be able to actually pierce and stay in because the more you ride around or the more your horse runs, it just sits inside and grinds out a hole this oof. big around inside the meat and the muscle. Oof, oof. Everything seems so elegant until we got to this. Oh yeah. So yeah, walk us through the technique if you don't mind. All right, different from American archery or uh, Western archery, in the horseback field, end up using our thumbs for drawing. Normally you use three fingers, we call it the Mediterranean draw. Draw back to there, release. And then release, right. yeah. This, you actually form like an L, like that. You bend it inwards. The string sits on the back side of the ring. We actually have rings that'll fit you. So the string sits just on the inside, like so. Take that pointer finger, put it right on the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Straight back. And when you release, just let those two fingers go. Why is it different? So when you're riding, if say you were going to be riding and shooting Mediterranean, some people do this and some people are quite good at it. Uh, so you would have to use this finger to stabilize that arrow, to keep it from going anywhere. So normally you would just rely on gravity to mm -hmm. leave it in the groove, if you're standing, but when you're jostling if around. If you're standing, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. But when you're bouncing and riding, you have to worry about it. So traditionally what they would do is instead of being on the knuckle side, they would be on the thumb side. And what that does is when your fingers are locked in, pushes up against the side of the arrow, now I don't have to touch the arrow at all. Ah. Uh, now you had called it Mediterranean style with the grip. Correct. What is this? It's Eastern just, draw, thumb draw. Eastern draw or thumb draw, mm -hmm. okay. Let's get going, can you show us some stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right, what are we looking at here? Horse bow? Yep. Arrows, easy. So the way we load, on horseback, front of the face. Arrow up. So the problem is, don't want it pointed down. Might hit your horse in the back of the head. Right. Mm. So you want to load up. Extend both out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is, is this uh, an appropriate distance that you'd be firing from a horse usually? It's, a, it's a little short, Yeah. Uh, but just for what we're doing here. I'm good this with is that. Fun. You mentioned that you hook with the thumb. We've got these, these crazy rings on. Uh, talk, talk me through what we're doing here. All right. So with the ring, the string sits on the back side of the ring. Okay. Now, when you hook it onto the string, you make an L, right? Like so. Uh-huh. Hook it onto the bottom of the string. Yep. Now, you'll feel the ring finds kind of a natural place for itself to sit. You'll yeah. find a balance. Yeah, like it fits right in the middle. Like it's, yeah, a balance is a good, good way to put it. It catches that bottom lip right there just perfectly. Yeah. So, 
Make an L. Close these fingers. Uh huh. In like this. Uh huh. Okay. Hook your finger. The tip of your pointer finger. Put it on your thumbnail. On the thumbnail. Just square on there. And then rotate your hand slightly around. And then we just draw straight back. I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to hurt myself or the ring's going to go flying, but I guess not. Huh? We'll try it a couple. Oh, jeez. For the love of me, do not dry fire a bow. <laughs> no, no dry firing my bows. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I did a no-no. Uh, dry firing is bad. To, dry it firing is a no-no. Oh, gosh, I, I did. I messed up the thing. I pissed off a hun. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not a good place to be. <laughs> it's fine. OK, all right, good. No, they're durable. <laughs> Student-minded bows. <laughs> all right, so on horseback, you would be sitting astride like so, resting on your heels. All right, so the tips of your toes off the ground. OK. Knock upwards. Straight back. Whew. Now, let's, let's I'll see. run you through it, all right? <laughs> okay. okay. This is dangerous. I'm glad I'm on this side. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. No, if fine. I can teach seven-year-olds, I can teach you two. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, let's not get ahead yeah. of ourselves. Slow right. down there, Mr. Hun. Shoulder width apart. You don't play for the 49ers, so tighten it up a little bit. Knees bent. Okay. Rock back on your heels just a bit. Okay. Feel a little unstable? Yep. Good. Now, <laughs> arrow goes. Thumb side, so bow here. Yep. Bring the arrow up. It goes under the bead. The bead is the red thing? Correct. Okay. So you always want the white feather outwards. Oh, okay. Why is that? Because that's called what we call the cock feather, and we don't want it to strike the side of the bow. Okay. All right, so that this little gap on the back side corresponds with where the hole is in the knock. I gotcha. All right, so ring goes underneath. You got it? Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> now, what went wrong there is you're holding on to this, and then you pulled the string back, and it pulled the arrow off the string. OK, yeah. So just put this thumb about there. Ah, OK, just put your thumb out. Yep. Now, straight back all the way. More, more. Hey, hey! Like yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I, I scared him. He, Again. Warning shot. Put it below the bead. You're going to knock it. Use that thumb. Oh, use the thumb. Yeah, yeah. OK. Little. It's clumsy. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm clumsy. In my mind, there's a war on happening. I know. It's everybody's going nuts. He's like, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. There Whoa. you go. Bring that knuckle up. There you go. Ah, worse than last time. So am I aiming this right down the arrow? No, you can't do that because it's on the wrong side. Okay. Oh, that's right. Now, here's where we're going to get really weird. OK. Try it again. You draw back. Mm-hmm. I want you to feel the front of the bow twisting in your hand. I want you to twist the bow slightly to the left. Okay. And when you release, just let your wrist go to the side. This wrist? Yes. Okay. I'm holding the bow, so it's going to do this. Just break to the side when you release. Hmm. Try it. That's going to prevent the chances of the string slapping you, right? Also, so there's a thing, you might have known this from college, called the archer's paradox. Yeah, see, I don't remember anything because it was 7 in the morning, so I usually skipped it. Ah. Yeah. Oh, God. Th you're, this is ridiculous, yeah. Imagine doing this on a moving horse. That's not going to happen, hon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, hey! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The archer's paradox is what? <laughs> so as the, as the arrow leaves the side of the bow, it actually pushes into the side of the bow and then goes and whips down the field. And the fletching on the back of the arrow is what straightens the arrow's path, kind of like the rifling in the barrel of a gun. Got it. Slightly twist, and when you release, like wow, that. Wow, much better. Closer, yeah. yeah. Much so better. just a little mm -hmm. twist to the left, yeah. We call that katra. Katra. Isn't that how they got Spock back from the dead? Is it Katra? Mm. No. No. Shoot again. That's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up. Yep. Not stabbing your horse in the back of the head. Yep. So it becomes almost second nature. We practice this all the time. All oh, right. yeah. Get right? that thumb down in the front. There you go. Okay. And then twisting. And then... Like that. Very good. Okay. Not bad. All right, you I gotta try? try. I gotta try. All right. Oh man. Okay, here you go. And what's the story with this uh, awesome? As tough as we like to be, those arrows will give your hands hell. Oh yeah. I have a, a spot on the back of this knuckle where there was no skin for a while. Oh god. Yeah. So you're saying this is yet another opportunity for me to injure my hands? Oh, of course. <laughs> Up. No, no, just bend it right there. Okay. All right. And then get this. Use this thumb right below this. Loop around on the bottom. Yep. There Close you go. Close these fingers. Oh. Hey. See. 
Yeah. All right. Make sure it's like this. Close these fingers. Oh, you got only it. want got these it. two being used. Got it. So, so use the L, loop it. Oh, man. It's because you're holding up here. Got it. As soon as you touch that string. Just balance it on there. Just yeah. balance it on your thumb. Okay. All right. There we go. So, oh, there we go. So it's more like you're just holding a pencil. Yeah. Right. So just. <laughs> Whoa. All right. I feel better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So if you're picking zombie uh, apocalypse survival teams, <laughs> might want to take note. Yeah, find a hun. <laughs> okay, so th this down, so this guy take here. Take the pressure. Oh, oh, and go up. There hey, you go. Nope. There we go. Oh. No, we don't. We don't draw upwards. Okay. Arrows come back down. Got it. All right. <laughs> ah. There you go. All right. Oh. Bring this up to your face. Up, up, up. Yep. Got there it. you go. Got it. Remember your katra brushwood. And then kind of wrist open to the left, mm -hmm. right? Hey! Yeah. All right, so it seems like all of us are aiming a little bit high. Are we just believing it's gonna fall more than it will? Most people shoot high the first time around. Okay, hmm. all right. this is gonna be for all the money in the world. We're totally gonna be able to do this on horseback. Oh my God, it'd be a breeze. <laughs> we have to learn how to ride horses. Yeah, first okay. we have to learn how to ride horses. So this guy goes in. So remember, just use it like a pivot. So just Got angle it, it up. This side of the finger oh, is touching the side of the arrow. Oh, that's great. So it feels like I'm pinching it. There you go. Okay. Now, bring this up to your eye. All right. Further. Close. There, there you oh go. Oh, my gosh. Feels there so you go. Dangerous. I'm going to aim lower. Slight twist. I hit the target. I hit the... Well I, done. I winged well done. him. I winged him. Well done. All right. You, you win a furry win. hat. <laughs> or the chiclets. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Now you got to be careful with okay. that front finger. Yeah. Okay, holding it like a pencil. Just barely. Fingers down, L, hooked around back. Yep. And then rotate On this the in. And you'll feel the pressure up against the side of the and arrow. You pinch it. There you All go. All the way up to the eye. Close your front hand. There you go. Bring your thumb down. Ah, there we go. And then rotate the wrist. Ah, nice. That's a solid hit. I'm calling it. Solid. We're champions good. now. I think good so. job. Yep. Holy cow, hun, that was amazing. Honorary huns, maybe? No, no, not, not yet. Yeah, number one fan club, hun, hun fan club. Hun fan club. That's us. Uh, no, number one hunter. No, <laughs> number one hunter. <laughs> Honey bunnies, maybe. I don't know. We're gonna get back to you on this. The we Hunisher. Got... The Hunisher. All right, no, we're done. He's gonna say. He's like, you got ten seconds. Run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Greatest game. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Do you want to tell him or can I tell him? I, I think you should tell him. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Dude, themodernrogue.com is going to have daily brand new content starting every weekday right now. There are five articles waiting for you because we're finally expanding the site beyond our little show. We have always wanted to do this, but there's only so many videos that we can do per day. We're a small team. And there's times that you can't be watching videos. Sometimes you want to read articles. We wanted The Modern Rogue to flesh out and have a bunch of awesome, thought-provoking stuff that will make you the most interesting interesting person in the room that is funny and fun to read and it turns out one of my favorite websites just fired everyone just fired everyone uh, almost everyone and i was just like man i think we got to do this you it's, pounced i pounced we've got a team writing articles at themodernrogue.com and it's all done through our friends over at squarespace yes when we first started the website was just a landing page to tell people to go watch the show on youtube yeah everybody watched us make it yes now it's a destination with all sorts of thought provoking interesting content that's coming up from some of the internet's the biggest creators yes. Yes, yes, the finest authors. I could not be more excited about it. My favorite part about this whole thing is our editor-in-chief had never used Squarespace before. At the other website he was working on, he had to do a bunch of hand coding and stuff. And so when he experienced Squarespace, he was like, holy crap. This is amazingly simple. You mean I just drag this over? And so yeah. it's like, I'm constantly giving them notes like, hey, uh, what, what would this look like if it was up or down or left or right? Mm -hmm. Normally that's when a web developer tells you, well, you can't really do that. And instead he's just like, there, take a look. Yeah, his response was along the lines of someone who had been opening packages with their teeth their entire <laughs> life. And then we said, here, use this knife. <laughs> yes. And because this is a brand new venture, we don't know how quickly this is gonna blow up. We're in it for the long haul. I think it's gonna be a premier destination website, but with other web providers might explode. You might get crippled with bandwidth problems or too expensive. Because it's Squarespace, everything scales. I don't have to worry about none of that. So go to themodernrogue.com right now. I think you're going to be surprised. All of a sudden, this talent was just available, and 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 I'm sure everybody was wondering where they were going to go. I was like, I was like, I, I've got a place. <laughs> you can come to my place.
Squarespace. Yeah, and just use Squarespace and make this amazing thing. Yeah, squarespace.com slash rogue. Get 10% off, keep us in business. And check out the site. Yeah. The site's amazing.